we've gone. Where's his leisure centre's gone? We've got nowhere to go. There's a recession on, so they can't afford. They wanted to go to gyms and things or swimming. They can't afford to go in town and go to these big gyms. A hundred percent of the people who attend there are Muslims. They're doing it for us, not for anyone else. Why did they why did they make it? To make money for themselves. But we are paying them, but why boost the prices up? For us who our fathers and grandfathers and you know, we paid for it. I'm really pleased about the number of people that attended today's event. I think we've got some really good um, information on their views. I think it works, bringing things out into a community setting. Um, and I think we had a very good community conversation. Today was an area committee meeting, which sounds a bit dull. And in the past, they have been dull because we've had huge amounts of paper to, to work through. And, and it always feels a bit sterile, so where's it going to go? This was an attempt to do it in a completely different way, where we do the necessary business, but at the same time we involve as many um, residents and other and officers relevant to a particular topic. So we had four topics to look at today, the environment, health, uh, youth. Positive things to moving forward and involving to the whole community, to making a, a major change in the community. Um, it was a really important event to, to, to gauge the views of the community in what services and what the issues are um, and we were able to encourage some young people to come along today um, to get their views across and listened to by the councillors and the other officers who were attending the events. It was really positive. But it's a new way of working today and hopefully um, this should set the plat platform for future working of the community committees. A chance for a mix of people to talk about specific issues and see what isn't going right and what could go right. So I mean it's only a start but at the very least it was an opportunity to involve a lot of people to have their say on how things could improve in the area. Very formal, um, a lot of people were unaware, it wasn't announced. There was a lot of young people and residents of the areas I think that the concern with the east of Leeds which uh, would like her to have come but were unaware of what was happening and what it was all about. It's a gentle revolution actually that's taking place where local people are involved in more decision making than they've ever been before and I think it'll give the results as again the outcomes that people want to see on their estates and in their families who are out of work for a long time. Fundamentally what we wanted to do is have round table discussions to listen to people first hand about what's important to them and how we might address their needs. Really positive meeting, um, it's quite different to how they've worked before, a um, lot of people here obviously and it was good to hear their different viewpoints. Today's event has been really quite eye-opening and interesting because it's uh, been an occasion where lots of people have come from different parts of the community in the East Leeds and have talked about the things that really matter to them. As a chair of a community committee and the way we've done as a new format uh, it's one of the highest turnout, I think, in other than other ten area committees, and we have achieved over a hundred people. Where's this youth group gone? Where's this leisure centre gone? We've got nowhere to go. There's a recession on, so they can't afford. They want to go to gyms and things or swimming. They can't afford to go in town and go to these big gyms. I live in the area and I'm sort of here to represent the young people that we took through from very young that now have children of their own and there's nothing for them and they're concerned about what what is there for their young people. We've got a, a community centre that's quite a, a new building that's just going to pieces on Holton Moor. I'm sure each area has their own things like that where it's just a waste and everybody's losing the, the spark and they don't want to be engaged with anything anymore. They're not bothered because they, they don't feel as if they're getting listened to. 
I think people are very frustrated. Um, it's, it's a really difficult environment with budget cuts and funding as it is. Um, and it's really difficult to, to come to terms with what they had when they were uh, 12 when, and now they're 16. Because only four years has gone by. But a massive, massive change in in services and funding's gone on. You tried arresting me for kicking a football? Let's, let's forget that. We want more in Hells. All we have for our age, which is 14 plus, is one youth club, which is at MCS, and they are busting the prices up as well. So what it is, yeah, is we want either the government to give more funding or to arrange a meeting with them for us to convince them to keep the, you know, the price, yeah, allow it, the price how it is. And also we've got a hub, and we also want some days there as well with our youth workers because we're not comfortable with the ones they have as we don't know them. We've bonded with our current youth workers. No, we haven't got enough agendas to go around anybody. If anybody wants the details, I'm happy to email them those minutes so they can see what's been discussed and what's been agreed. Well, I was facilitating the young people's table and there was quite a lot of strong opinions, particularly from the young people themselves. And they were saying that perhaps the provision that is on at the moment isn't necessarily what they're wanting and also that it's difficult to access because there isn't always the community venues that are accessible to them and also transport links to get to the, the venues themselves. The government to give us more money but they can't. They've been giving it, giving it, giving it. Now the mosque putting the prices up. We want the mosque to deduct the prices. Now, it's not like they're doing it for anyone else but we're all Muslims who attend there. Seriously, no like racism or you know anything to do with culture. Anyone's welcome but the majority, literally what I would say, 100% of the people who attend there are Muslims. They're doing it for us, not for anyone else. Why did they Why did they make it? To make money for themselves. But we are paying them. But why boost the prices up? For us, who, our fathers and grandfathers, and you know, we paid for it. We gave them money to pay for it. They didn't go out working and give all the wages to the mosque. We do it ourselves. The, the concerns that I uh, understood from young people uh, today were more about... Um, venues not being available to them and activities not being available to them. Um, the concerns coming from the young people are lack of, lack of uh, resources for trips and activities, uh, concerns over losing access to, to places, buildings um, where they can actually go, um, losing access to parks and playing space, uh, concerns about um, anti so-called anti-social anti behaviour and those kind of things, that's what the young people were saying today really. As I say, you, you may live in Aerials, you may live in uh, Eber Gardens, you could live at Seacroft, but basically what the young people are saying is all the same thing. Give us back as youth clubs, a lot of it, work with the community and we'll work with you. The concerns that they have, the barriers they see to improvement, but also um, some solutions. So I think it's been really quite interesting from that point of view. And with things re regarding health and well-being, uh, jobs and, and also the environment, etc. In the East area, it's got different challenges. It's got challenges with jobs and skills. It's got challenges in the environment. It's got challenges how do we engage with young people. I think this community committee was to break down those barriers and build bridges uh, with different organisations, with local residents, and we achieved them uh, issues and them challenges today. Particularly in Inner East area, there are a lot of serious environmental concerns. So we had services around the table from the environmental locality team. We had people there from Housing Leeds who have run the estate caretaking. And we had people that service the refuse um, collections. So you know we were able to respond to residents queries but there were still a lot of concerns that are being looked at at the moment that we didn't have the answers for but we've sort of made a commitment to go back to them over the next sort of few weeks and definitely before the next meeting we won't be waiting till the next meeting to keep in contact with them and get people's views known. It's deteriorated three years of families being out of work right it's, re it's reflecting now on the, the youth of the uh, families and what have you they're not applying for jobs and what have you and this is what concerns me they're not applying for apprenticeships they're looking the way at the way the families actually suffered under the three years of this coalition and that that's what caused me some concern. It's not over a hundred basically out of which means over a hundred are very tight uh, to uh, to save it, even the frontline services uh, for the local community for the local areas and across the city uh, which ones is courts uh, basically is killing to every single person in the Leeds. Some of the things that um, came up were things around um, 
geographical isolation and transport and, and how you build um, people's ability to travel. Another area that came up was the language barrier um, that many of the communities are new to Leeds and we have um, we maybe don't always have the right access points for people. How do we work with those local groups who are already in contact with those new groups? Um, and also some particular geographical areas that are very specific in terms of their needs, um, in terms of large numbers of people who've been unemployed for a long time, who need confidence building. Well I was chairing the health and well-being group and so there was a concern for the, for the reasons why people do have mental health issues and a lot of it, quite a lot of it, is to do with loneliness. People don't have opportunities to, to meet one, one another um, like, like they did um, and it, it's a question of um, what opportunities um, people can have to, a to meet together but there's a lot of things that go on which which people might enjoy but it's a question of how you encourage them to get there there was a very interesting story told by the GP that um, um, a doctor's hedge was cut and when they cut the hedge they found a whole lot of leaflets that had been given to the people at the surgery and they'd thrown them away as soon as they got out the door. That's, in other words, leaflets on their own are no good. What you really need is somebody who will say to you, look, I do this, I go to the gym or I go swimming or I go walking or I go to a knitting class or craft class, whatever it is, why don't you come along with me? And if you've got that personal touch, then um, it, it, it's... Um, it makes all the difference in the world. You should have leaflets and, and, and um, information boards and so on, but in the end it's that personal touch and, and quite a lot of our discussion was, was how you can best do that. Well this is the start of it and I think um, I'll need to work with the chair of the community committee and the local ward members to pull together the information that we heard today and then think about which things we can take forward and which things we need to learn more about and which things we need to take back to some of our larger citywide services to see whether or not we can influence what they do. Well, what we've got to do now is we've got to go away and assess and look at the points, all of the points that have been made. And what we've got to do is look at how we can address them, and if we can't address them, how we can engage to possibly um, improve our, our way of working to better fit local people's needs. I think this is the first in a long line of conversations and I think this is something that we'll be doing again perhaps in different formats in different places but this is the very first start in the process. If they rejig it and get it where the members of the community are involved more maybe not so formal which I think that's what the idea was this was a, a one-off and they're hoping to they were questioning people, how can we re-engage with the community? And then they're going to have to go out and ask people. I mean, it's no use going and saying, well, you know, we're going to go to the uh, youth clubs because half of the youth clubs aren't there anymore, unfortunately. I think one of the great things is that the council have come here. So they haven't invited everybody to go to the Civic Hall. They've come here and they're actually in, in, the, in, the, pro in the appropriate context to listen to local people. So we'll see what happens.